This, ladies and gentlemen, is a video that has been in the works for well over a year now. It appeared as one of the options on my first community poll on January 28th, 2022, and unfortunately kept losing poll after poll after poll. Until the latest one, where, for the first time ever, it ended up in the top three, which means that a video of that subject is now due. And so, here it is, the history of Saturday Night Nickelodeon, or SNICK. Much like the story of Nick at Night, the story of SNICK starts with Nickelodeon's Geraldine Laybourne, whom, at the time of Nick at Night's creation, was Nickelodeon's general manager, but by the time of our story, was now its president. She believed that the major networks were wrong to assume that there was no market on television for children on Saturday nights. Her response? She was going to dispel what she viewed as a myth. She believed that a Saturday night block could increase Nickelodeon's viewership by as much as a million viewers on Saturdays. That Saturday night block ended up being SNCC, which launched on August 15th, 1992. It aired from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., leaving room for only four shows. Even so, SNCC made good use of this short airtime, airing Clarissa Explains It All, Roundhouse, The Ren and Stimpy Show, and Are You Afraid of the Dark. These and other shows came and went over the years, such as The Secret World of Alex Mack, All That, Space Cases, Doug, Keenan and Kel, The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu, Rocco's Modern Life, Kablam, Rugrats, The Journey of Alan Strange, The Angry Beavers, and Animorphs. By 1993, Laybourne's beliefs had been proven correct, with SNCC boosting Nickelodeon to be the number one network for kids on Saturday nights. Also in that same year, Nickelodeon made three VHS releases that captured the SNCC experience on home video. Nick SNCC's Friendship, Nick Snicks The Family, and Snick Volume 3. On October 16th, 1999, the original Snick was replaced by a new block called Snick House, with new bumpers featuring a style reminiscent of the one that would be employed by the end nearly three years later. It featured a new format where celebrities and artists would be invited on the block to host. There was also a new feature called Snick House Video Picks, where viewers could vote on their favorite music videos and then those videos would be featured on the block, similar to what MTV Hits did with My Playlist Month and Playlistism. Now that I think about it, Snick House laid the groundwork for what a lot of other Viacom and Nickelodeon brands would do in years to come, so it was pretty influential in that way. However, Snick House didn't last even one year being discontinued on October 1st, 2000. After that, the old SNCC format returned. But even then, the return of classic SNCC only lasted for about nine months before being discontinued again on June 30th, 2001. This time, SNCC was replaced by Nick Flix, in which Nickelodeon movies and extended TV specials would be featured every Saturday night. But this didn't mean SNCC was gone, oh no. This was merely the beginning of a cycle, where SNCC would be around for a few months, then Nick Flix would take over before SNCC came back again. This cycle, however, finally ended in 2002, when SNCC returned for good. By now, the block was developing a new style, with the cast of All That participating in dares in which some really bizarre and... gross things would happen. Welcome to this week's Snick on Air Dare! <laughs> hey you guys, tonight one of your favorite All That cast members is going to have to do something extremely awful. Something nasty and totally brutal. <laughs> I can't wait! Yeah. And the dare is... <laughs>
So Shane, are you looking forward to shaving your principal's legs? No, no, not really, Kyle. <laughs> In 2003, a shift began in the block's branding in which it began to be referred to as Saturday Night Nickelodeon in full rather than the acronym SNICK. By 2004, this change had been applied in full, in which it still said SNICK in the logo but everyone on the block still referred to it as Saturday Night on Nickelodeon. However, this was not all to last, for on February 5th, 2005, the block lost the SNCC name and was rebranded to Teen Nick with one N. If you want to learn more about that, I recommend my Teen Nick video. Link is in the video description. And so, the SNCC name had finally, fully disappeared from the airwaves. But, little did anyone know that this wouldn't be its last appearance. Over six years later, on July 25th, 2011, the 90s Are All That was launched on Teen Nick with two ends, fueled by an insatiable thirst for 90s Nickelodeon nostalgia. And of course, Snick was an integral part of Nickelodeon in the 1990s, so it seems only inevitable that the new block would try to recreate or at least pay homage to Snick in some way. And pay homage, it did. In the final week of 2011, the 90s Are All That ran Party Like It's the 90s, where each night until the new year, the classic SNCC lineups from many of the block's best years would be recreated. And that wasn't the only time either. On August 17th, 2013, in honor of SNCC's 21st anniversary, the 90s Are All That ran SNCC-iversary, in which the original lineup of SNCC, except for Roundhouse, which was replaced by All That, was aired for one night. And then, in August of 2011, by which point the 90s are all that had become Nick Splat, in honor of Snick's 25th anniversary, Nick Splat aired multiple Snick lineups, in a similar way to Party Like It's the 90s, only this time the lineups were aired every Saturday of the month, like the original block. This was around the time that I was watching Nick Splat, and I actually remember being excited for this event because it was one of the only times Nick Splat ever aired Kablam, my personal favorite Nicktoon. However, this was the last time Snick was featured on Nick Splat, which later became Nick Rewind, and now with Nick Rewind gone, it's unlikely that Snick will make another appearance anytime soon. Of course, I was never able to watch SNCC during its original run, not only because it was before my time, but because my parents didn't like me watching TV that late. However, I was, of course, able to witness Nick Splat's version of SNCC. And who knows? Perhaps I'll get my hands on those SNCC VHS releases so I can recreate the SNCC experience for myself and get a glimpse of what it was like. SNCC was certainly a fantastic phenomenon that made the Saturday nights of thousands of 90s and 2000s kids, and though I have a limited relationship with it, I'm glad it came to be. Let me know in the comments, were you around for any of the numerous incarnations of SNCC? How do you think, if at all, the block could return? Anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned.